In the back we can see the Randmeyer Carpenter and you can see the my nice shiny aluminum paint where I've reformed that uh, that support for the uh, back upright and it's still got to be ground down smoothed up and everything but there again the main the main focus for right now is just finding out what kind of condition this lathe is in and how how well it's going to run and if it's going to do anything and if it's worth doing anything with so um I've got to clean that all up and that'll eventually get reworked. So right now we're just just checking for function on everything. So this is the part that mounts up on top. Our uh, fly belt pulleys mount in here for the and sit right above the pulleys for the uh, headstock there. Our motor sits on top and this is our gearbox. So this is the way it was originally put together and they used the additive method and what happened is as near as I can tell they held a piece of material or a gearbox or whatever up there if it looked good they added it there they added a piece of metal to hold it in place and they added some weld so um, this was all assembled apparently as they as I went together so I couldn't disassemble it so um, I've got the plate just mounted on top and we're gonna pull it off but I wanted to show you how it was originally mounted and what I what I plan to do with it so as I shrunk this down, I see that I can shrink this down, I think, a fair amount. I'm going to shorten this up about two and a half inches. And I debated not doing that because I would have had to change the upper belt, which I'm going to have to do. And for right now, I really don't want to invest a whole lot of money in it until we get actually to working on it. But um, these are the bolts that held the motor on, and they used these big nuts of spacers. So between it and the motor. So there's no belt adjustment or belt tension adjustment on this other than what they've just put. They've added washers and, and a nut for spacers to evidently give tension to, to this belt that runs off the motor and down here. So uh, I'm going to change that irrespective. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down about two and a half inches. And then I'm just going to bolt it on. This was all welded in place and it's all two inch angle iron what i'm going to do is shorten it up and it'll set the whole plate will set back down on top and i'm just going to drill it in from on each corner where the uh, angle iron goes and bolt it i think that'll be plenty of support for it so that's the plan for right now but what i wanted to show you before i got this together and i found it really interesting was the gearbox itself and um, i'm not sure what they used for a gearbox but there again as as i said before this was all welded as they put it together so i couldn't get the gearbox out they've they spent quite a bit of time and i'll bring you in closer here so you can see but they spent quite a, quite a bit of time doing the mounting plate for this and i don't know what this gearbox is off of um and i don't know that much about it and i'm not sure i understand it yet but we'll uh, get into that a little bit too but they machined a plate to pretty well match the outer contours of the front of the gearbox i don't i think we can yeah i haven't tightened this on here yet um input shaft off of something so it went to a tractor a car truck whatever pulleys actually cut out for the hex on the back so it indexes on that nut but anyway they spent quite a bit of time machining out this plate and it's all drilled for this and and then they welded it solid here well, on the back side, and I'll show you that in just a minute, they had two uprights, and they bolted to the uh, to the housing on the back, but then they just ran down, and then they were welded in place, so I couldn't disassemble the, the unit itself. So um, what I did is I cut those loose after I finally got it out, and I pressure washed it off. It's still ugly, but there again, just getting it a little bit cleaned up. It had a lot of hardened grease on it. There's still a lot of gunk here. So what they did with this gearbox is they just bolted a point in here and one on the other side with a uh, bolt through their rear. You know, it's got bolts on it anyway. They mounted a piece of plate down and then they just welded them. They were welded solid. So what I did is I cut those loose, went ahead and put the, the remnants back on, then just fitted a piece of angle iron onto the back of it to mount down here on the back and drilled it and tapped or drilled it so that I can bolt them in place right there like that. So this is all just, just get us in place and working again. And there again, when we get back to actually working on this lathe, why we'll, uh, we'll tidy everything up and decide exactly what we're going to do because 
part of this is kind of crude but by the same token for the you know whenever this was converted from a flat belt to operate off of this gearbox and motor whether it was uh, I don't even know the era you know 30s 40s 50s 60s whatever it may be why um, it's kind of ingenious in, in a way so Once I get the top cut down, the plates back on it, why, before I actually mount the motor, and I think I'll mount the motor here on the ground so that I can figure out belt length and how I'm going to adjust it and what I'm going to do. For now, if I need to, I'll probably just shim it, um, similar to what they've got now, but hopefully... But hopefully with a little bit cleaner setup for shims and everything, where we don't have a have a um, nut used as a spacer, or four nuts in this case. But I'll pop the pop the top off of it, and we'll fill, look inside it, and uh, then we'll fill it with fill it with gear oil to run it. I don't have any great optimistic hope that it's not going to leak because it's not. It was so encrusted with grease before that I, I think we must have had some leaks on there, but um, I don't know. We'll see. So that's the way I did my mounting plate. So now I can disassemble it. I can pull this off and um, pull the pulley off, pull the bolts out of the front of it, and then it will come out. Now what they had before is this, this cable came over. And attaches to here and I think this had a spring on it if I remember I've got the parts laying here but this is pretty well kinked up and not in real good shape I'm sure we'll at some point change this if we utilize it as it's intended and then we had this spring was wrapped around here as a tension spring this way but it took me a few minutes to figure out this is a three-speed car transmission or a three-speed transmission out of something and um, it's really pretty straightforward and pretty ingenious the way they've got it set up. So we're in neutral there. We've got one gear there, a forward gear. Oh, I guess we had a, maybe not, maybe that was a reverse gear. Anyway, one way or the other. Let's see, let's shift this one. Go back down, we got a forward gear. We got another forward gear, a lower forward gear. This way, I believe, is a reverse gear, and there's our other forward gear. So that's what we got, is some sort of a automotive transmission, and or tractor transmission, something. Anyway, if anybody knows, let me know. Forward, 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 and reverse. There we go. All right, now I understand. Now I think I understand. So three-speed gearbox, but anyway, I found it uh, kind of interesting that they were they adapted it to this. So what I'm going to do, like I say, I'm going to shorten this up about two and a half inches. We'll drop it down, drill it for bolts on all four corners, and then we'll go ahead and mount our motor and see if we can't get this back up in place. Probably by the end of the weekend, while we'll have it mounted back in place, um, not really going to worry about painting anything up or doing anything fancy with it. We just want to get it up and running. So once I get the uh, overarm support actually sitting here on the ground, we're going to do the bottom end. We'll go ahead and mount our motor on it, make sure our gearbox is there. Then I'm going to pull the motor back off. We'll lift the assembly back up on and um, put our flat belt pulleys on and get them. Well, I can't adjust them. I can adjust motor tension, but I can't set up the bullies yet. I've got to order uh, some clipper lacing to lace the belts and uh, then we'll be ready to run it so anyway hopefully you found this a little bit interesting any comments or suggestions leave them in the comment section for me below and as always thanks for taking the time to watch well here's just a last little final walk around for the day I uh, couldn't stand it we went ahead and cut two and a half inches out there's our four little pieces and we've got it lowered down set on there and all that's left for this mounting plate, I think, for right now is just to drill and drill the four holes into it. We've got clearance for all of this stuff. 
and uh, I think that looks really good when we put the gear back on I do have the gear here let me stick that back on there or the pulley on there just like that we've got clearance underneath for everything so that's where we're at we're gonna leave it right there I will edit this and get it out there for you guys and uh, tomorrow when I get opportunity we'll go ahead and get that drilled and bolted on there and then we'll mount our motor check our pulley or our belt length and probably get this mounted up on the on the lathe